Welcome everybody to Nigu TV. My name is Eric Reese. I get the honor of being the CEO of the Jesse Reese Foundation and that little girl's daddy. And today on this special episode of Chatting with Cade, we have Emily Escobedo. Emily, welcome. Thank you. We're so excited to have you. Cade, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing really good. That's great, man. So let's start the chatting, Cade. All right. Uh, thank you for, um, first of all, um, thank you for being here. Um, what first drew you to Nigu? Um, I think it actually started, well, I, I joined Nigu, um, because I was, I was swimming and they had these swim squads. I was on the national team and we did swim squads and Caitlin Sandino um, was my swim squad captain and she was a part of Nigu. So she actually got me involved in the organization. Um, but my mom is a pediatric oncology nurse. So I've kind of grown up dealing with kids with cancer my whole life, doing different fundraisers, you know, getting involved with CCF and all different ty types of organizations. So she had actually recommended for me to try and look into this organization like a few weeks before I found out about it. Um, so it, that was kind of what got me started, but um, I'm happy to be a part of it. And that's awesome. And you, you're actually based out of New Jersey, correct? That's where you live? New York. New York. New York. Okay. Yeah. But I did meet up with some, some of them in New Jersey yes. for a George R. Delivery. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what, um, what do you love about the um, hospital visits? Oh, I love getting to meet the patients. Um, just like putting a smile on their face, but really it ends up there putting the biggest smile on my face. So um, it's just, just great both ways, I think, around. Um, it's inspiring to see kids um, especially the ones that are living in the hospital or, and are in inpatient um, and to see them still so happy and joyful and encouraging and inspiring to each other and to, and to all of us. So um, it, it's really fun to get to meet them. I mean, it's, it's really sad when you have kids that really aren't themselves at the moment and they're really in, in, in a lot of pain. Um, and that's truly, it's, it's terrible. It's sad to see and it hurts, but um, you know, it always reminds me how lucky I am, how lucky I am to be part of an organization like this, how lucky I am to, you know, even go around and hang out with them for just five or 10 minutes during the day and hope that I can make a smile on their face. Mm -hmm. You definitely do that. We love having you go in to visit the kiddos. Thank you. I know. I wish, I hope we can start visits soon. <laughs> yeah. COVID thing is really messing with it. It is. Mm -hmm. What's next, Cater? Um, how old were you when you, like, really, like, found out that you were really good at swimming? Oh, I found out that I was really good. I'm probably not until college. I've really started believing myself and feeling or realizing how great I could be and how far I could actually make it. It was probably not until college. I mean, um, I started swimming when I was six. I knew I loved the sport and that's really why I did it because I loved it and I had so much fun with it and I still do to this day. Um, but it took a while to really believe in myself and I think a lot of people helped me along the way, told me that I should believe in myself and, you know, believed in me more than I believed in, in myself. And so it wasn't until college that I kind of figured maybe I could be really good at this and make a career out of it or keep doing it after college, you know, it was all up in the air. It's hard to tell. <laughs> what is your uh, best stroke? Breaststroke. Breaststroke. Yeah. 200, 200, 400? 200 is my best, 100. And then sometimes I, I dabble in the two I am. Gotcha. Like all breaststrokers can kind of do the two I am sometimes. <laughs> do you like to swim, Cade? Yeah, my sister actually swims. She, she, oh, she, awesome. Yeah, she swims for um, Natadors. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a good team. Yeah. What stroke does she um, like? I think she, she's like, I mean, she like, she does a lot of it, but like, I think she like, she's really good at like breaststroke and all that stuff. Oh, like, awesome. But I remember that's not her like, favorite stroke, so. No, but we're it's all, not. But she's like, you're, but we always say like, you're really good at it. But like, she has a lot of favorites. Yeah. How old is your sister? She's um nine. Oh, okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was um? Everybody goes through hard times. What was the hardest thing that you had to overcome in sports? Um, I think the hardest part is, um you know, every day when you go to practice and you, you put a hundred percent in and you're working really hard. And sometimes even if you're working really hard and doing everything right, the outcome that you get at the meets doesn't really depict what you already did. So I would go to practices. I would work really hard. I would try to be as positive as possible. And I'd go to meets and I'd be so nervous about how I would 
going to perform. And at nerves and those anxieties, they, they kind of ruined the meets for me. So I wasn't performing where I knew I could be or where I thought I should be. Um, and that was probably the hardest part for me is working really hard and not getting the same outcome that you expect. Um, mm. But then you kind of have to realize that a lot of it is just mentality and, and your mental aspect is um, like, are you, are you, like, is your mind slowing you down because you're so nervous? And that's something that I'm still working on and I've, and I've been working on for a long time is realizing that, you know, swimming isn't everything. There's, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm able to swim and I love the sport, but it doesn't define who I am as a person. Um, it doesn't depict whether I'm going to, you know, succeed in life or not. So once I kind of realized that, I started to um, see that progress again. So it was that mind that's the hardest part to conquer because you can work hard every day and you can still fail, which kind of stinks to think about. But then you realize that failures are what helps you grow and failure is what pushes you to be better than you were before. So failure is actually really, really important in sports and, and in life in general. It's mm -hmm. just accepting that and being okay with it. Yeah. That was a good question, Kate. Um, what was your great accomplishment in sports? Um, well, I got to swim at a college level, so that was a pretty great accomplishment. It was in D1 at UMBC, the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Um, mm -hmm. And then my biggest accomplishment so far is being on the national team. So this is my third year on the national team, um, just qualifying and being on the national team is a huge responsibility and an honor. Um, and I actually got to travel to Italy last summer and I got to represent Team USA, which was like the most fun I've ever had at a swim meet. Um, I was so nervous and I was so excited because I felt there was so much pressure because Team USA is so good at swimming and so good at sports that I thought I had to be, you know, the best of the best to be there. Um, but it was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. So that's definitely my greatest accomplishment. Karen, congratulations on that accomplishment. That's Thank huge. you. <laughs> Thanks. That was a lot of fun. I bet. Um, I, I said on um, my sister's nine, she um, loves to swim. What advice would you give her? I would just, I would tell her to keep having fun with it. I think that's what's most important, really in anything in life, even like your job. If you love what you're doing, you're going to do well at it. You're going to succeed at it. So if she loves swimming and she has fun with it and she, you know, keeps it fun throughout her whole career, sometimes it gets really tiring and exhausting and some practices are definitely not fun. But if she loves the sport and tries to have as much fun with it and enjoy it to the best of her ability, I think she'll do great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, swimming is really hard. You sometimes have to give up a lot to, to give up a lot of other um, activities to, to be a great swimmer. I remember in high school, and in grade school, I could never go hang out with my friends on Friday afternoon after school because I had practice. I couldn't sleep over their house because I had Saturday morning practice. So I definitely had to give up a lot when I was younger, which was hard during that time. Um, but I don't regret it at all. I'm glad I, I was able to give those things up and get to where I am. And you had to give up some sleep because you had those really early workouts. I remember when I had to take Shea to practice at 5 a.m., and it was, oh, like, it's, that was early. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't get my um, driver's license when I was 16 because I didn't want to have to drive myself at six in the morning to practice. I liked the fact that my mom and dad still had to drive me if I didn't have my license. So I kind of stalled getting it for a while. They were yeah. kind of mad about it, of course. Yeah, yeah. The morning practices are not fun, especially when you have to, you know, in the winter when it's really cold and you have to bundle up before you go outside. Or you guys live in California, so I guess it's not that cold there. But in New York, it gets pretty cold. And then you're freezing, and you have to jump into a cold pool at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. That's like the worst feeling in the world. But, Kate, yeah. tell Lucy it's really a fun sport. And to keep it is. Yeah. It is a great sport, especially in California. If you guys can swim outside all year round, that's the best. I love swimming outside. Yeah, she – Um, I remember, like, when she, like, she still does meets, but I remember, like, when like, – when she like when like some meet she has she has to get up like really early because she has to like her first meet is at like eight or seven or something and she has to like, get to the pool at like six. I know. know. I know it's tough. On, it's tough on your parents too. That's probably the hardest part. I don't thank my parents enough for all the drives they took me to and all the practices and the swim meets in the early mornings, but mm -hmm. definitely tough on them too. Um. I, now I have some fun questions. Sweet. Awesome. Um, what time do you set your alarm? Oh, in the morning? Mm -hmm. um, well, right now I've been practicing a little bit later. So like 645. Mm -hmm. Get to set my alarm. 645? Yeah, um, what about you? I like, I'll get like my parent, like I had therapy this morning. 
So I I I, I got up um around like my parent my my dad woke me up at seven oh, thirty and then I early yeah yeah then I, well then I was like I he gave me like my my medicine I have to take in the morning and then I went to bed for like another five minutes and then I got up. Oh yeah, that's the best. I always set a few alarms like three to four minutes apart just in case yeah. I fall back asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesse loved, um, would, would you, would you rather? So we're gonna, um, do a couple of those. Okay. Um, one of them. Um, would you rather, um, swim in a hot pool or a cold pool? Cold pool. Cold. Yeah, I would, I mean, I like the, I don't like getting into cold pools, but if you're like racing and practicing, if you're in a hot pool, it's like the worst feeling because you never cool down. You're, you're sweating. People don't know that, but you sweat while you're swimming in the pool because you're working mm-hmm. so hard. So if the water is really warm, it just, it's very gross and you get tired more easily. If it's cooler, you don't really feel it as much. So I, I, I feel like, I feel like if you are, if it's hot, like you, like you kind of get tired and then it's like, you don't like, and if you have a cold pool, you kind of like feel like it kind of like wakes you up too. Yeah. Like before- oh, it does. A hundred percent. Yeah. In um, the beginning, some mornings yeah. when it's really cold. You jump mm-hmm. in and the pool's freezing. You have to like sprint really fast just in the mm-hmm. beginning of practice just to warm up and then you can slow down. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my last question. So I just want to um, thank you again for being here. Oh, um, of course. Thank you for having me, Cade. Yes, Emily. Thank you so much um, on behalf of Cade and our family and our foundation and stuff. Thank you for all you do for helping kids fighting cancer. Never, ever give up from visiting them in the, ki- the hospitals to you know, through your encouraging messages on our iNegu app to doing the hands challenge, which is behind Kate. Yeah. Um, thank you for everything you do. And like we said earlier, we can't wait to get back into the hospital with you. We wish you nothing but the greatest success and stay healthy. And uh, we can't wait to see you again. So thank you again. Thank for you so on. much. Yeah, you guys too. Kate, hopefully I'll get to meet you soon. Yeah. Next time I'm out in California. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.